Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable and I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 nonprofit organization. The purpose of our organization is creating global solutions. Solutions that address all aspects of the human experience from food, energy, housing, to education, for-profit, non-profit, highest good business models, true earth stewardship, recreation and social architecture, the very foundations, the very fabric from which society and civilization has sprung because our purpose, our intent, what we're doing with all of this is to build teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities around the world that take everything that we're creating and they bring it to the people that need it the most and they help to teach more and more people how to build self-sufficient and sustainable communities, villages, and cities that don't just address the basics of food, energy, and housing, but address the foundations of creating happier, healthier people. Addressing crime, addressing health, addressing education, the most important aspects of life that will truly set people free permanently. Establishing a way of living that will lead to a global transformation and a positive improvement for the life of every single person and thing living on this planet. And as grandiose and as crazy and as wild as that sounds, we believe that the time has come to do this because the knowledge exists and the ability to reach out to a global population of, what are we at, 7, 8 billion people right now and find that small percentage that is interested in joining us and dedicating their life to creating this for the benefit of everyone and everything on this planet. Because we believe that just a small percentage of people doing what is for the highest good of all, and that is, that is our philosophy, our guiding light, our guiding philosophy, is to do and create to the best of our ability for the highest good of all life. We believe that just a small percentage of people dedicating their life and really, really committing to doing that can make an amazing difference. And our organization is an example of this because we're already doing it. We have created hundreds of pages of amazing information. We have done tens of thousands of informa uh, hours of work. And, uh, and we're in the process of creating complete open source and free shared blueprints for total sustainable civilizations. And then we're going to teach people how to do that. We're going to demonstrate to people what that looks like, invite people to visit a tangible location where you can experience these things and take with you everything necessary to duplicate everything that we are doing so that you can teach others and so that those others can teach others. Creating exponential growth because what we want to provide is, in our opinion, going to be something that most people will consider far superior to their current way of living. Providing more time to do the things that they love to do, providing more money, no longer polluting our environment, our air, our water, spending more time with your kids, providing a better education for your children, providing a, an economic solution for most people that does not destroy our planet but actually contributes more than it takes. Uh, diversity of those economic solutions, and as I said, addressing the very foundations of the most challenging problems of our generation, crime and health, for instance, political system, all of these things in one place. So, this is our weekly update. This is our weekly progress update number 40, video blog number 40. Uh, it's not really our weekly update number 40 because we've been doing these weekly updates a lot longer than we've been doing video updates, but this is video update number 40 and uh, covering our progress for the week of November 25th, 2013. The format of these blogs is always the same. They're meant to be standalone blogs, so a lot of times I repeat myself as far as what our uh, mission is and our purpose in case somebody's just watching one of these blogs. And, uh, and I always try to also go try and make it short and sweet up front for people that might watch these all the time. And so with that said, um, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a bullet point list of everything that we've accomplished in the last week and then I will come back around and I will talk in depth and detail about each one of those bullet points about what's happening behind the scenes, what's planned for the upcoming week and uh, maybe some other details about things that are going on and kind of some, some points of, of uh, how we're developing and what our purpose is and what we're doing. So if you'd like to see complete details, meaning information written versions of this and pictures and 3D exports and all that kind of stuff that I'm going to talk about, the place to go is to our blog, which is onecommunityglobal.org forward slash one dash community dash blog, uh, or go to our website and just click on blog, or you can go to the YouTube link, the first link in the YouTube description, 
It will always be the link to this specific blog with these specific details. You can click on that and see everything that I'm talking about and have access right into the open source hubs and all the open source content and all the details that are those tools, tutorials, and resources and plans, blueprints, all of that that uh, we are purpose to provide so that people can have a do-it-yourself instruction manual for duplicating one community and for creating global solutions with us. Because we believe that if a truly global solution is to be had, it needs to be a global endeavor. And so our goal is to make it easy enough, to make it affordable enough, and to make it attractive enough to get the mainstream population on board because it meets their needs better than what's happening right now. And to create a true shift in all areas of our economy, in all areas of our society, that is for the highest good of all, that is empowering to everybody, that gets people looking at higher quality food, that gets grocery stores carrying higher quality food, that gets educational uh, institutions looking at better education and implementing a uh, higher quality of education, as well as providing free shared versions of all of this stuff so people can access that uh, everywhere in the world where they might not have the things that are available here in the United States or some of the other developed countries so we can get the resources in the hands of the people that need them most while simultaneously, uh, significantly, well, permanently and positively improving the way that everyone lives here and there, wherever you are. So let me jump into our update. This is number 40, as I said, November 25th, 2013 is the week that I'm talking about. It's been a super positive and um, proactive and productive week uh, because the holiday here in the United States has given us, uh, at least all of our United States folks, lots of extra time to be able to really work on all the things that we've been working on. So in this last week, uh, we finished lesson plan number one. It's now done uh, with the mind map for that lesson plan for the High School Education uh, and Education for Life program. You can see that now, the uh, picture is posted on the written blog, and you can actually see what the page looks like. There are going to be hundreds of these lesson plans that we are creating. It's really designed to be uh, endless, and I'll talk more in depth about that as I come back around and go into detail. So we've also, we're 90% done with the subject of math. We call it the math molecule because it's a non-linear approach to education that allows people that excel to be able to uh, touch in and the subject and the place where it's most challenging and most enriching for them rather than being stuck on a linear path. So we're 90% done with that and we'll include that as well with, uh, with the, is in the um, written blog. And then um, we're now, uh, and with that we got all the web infrastructure up. So when we finished lesson plan one this last week, we also got all of the foundational infrastructure for the lesson plan as well as all the breakout pages for that, which will be the math breakout page for the math molecule and the social sciences and science and all that stuff. All that basic infrastructure is in place. We haven't been able to put the content in, but we got the basic infrastructure built out uh, this last week. Um, behind the scenes, we are reformatting all of our open source portals, including the education portal, including the highest good society portal, including the highest good energy portal, highest good food, highest good housing. All of these portals are being totally revamped and redone and streamlined so that they all look the same and so that they're a lot easier to navigate. So we're very excited to be able to share that. Um, we uh, also in food infrastructure, moving on to food infrastructure, we got 30 of of the food forest plants are now complete which puts us at a total of 380 plus plants that we have done the details for i'll talk about that more in a moment um, we're beginning work on a global plant information application with our newest partner uh, guy fraser who is not up on the website yet because he's that new of a partner but we spent a lot of time uh, talking about this list last week so we begin work on a global plant information application. We've got some images that are part of the written blog. You can take a look at that, kind of see a little bit of the structure of where we're going with this and what we're intending. Really amazing. I'll talk more details on that in just a second. Uh, we're still working on the aquaculture. We're starting to price and look at the hardware, the hardware that's necessary for creating all that, those details, you know, really doing the research necessary and what's going to last the longest, what's going to be the best way to go with that. Um, we have finished reformatting of the Highest Good Society page. I said that we, behind the scenes, we've done all the work necessary for the reformatting, and then we're transferring that over to up in front and center so that people can see those differences. And we finished the Highest Good Society page, so I'll talk a little more about that in a second. Uh, we also completely updated and rewrote Time Allotment Projections page in this last week. We're 90% done with the Earthbag Village landscaping 
in 3D. Uh, we've got a 5D uh, version of the Earthbag Village that you'll actually be able to walk around in coming probably next week. It's actually done, um, and you'll be able to check that out with a new partner that we'll be announcing this week as well. And the Sago Center uh, final dining dome windows and doors are now done in 3D. And last but not least, we have had an amazing, like a ridiculously huge outpour of support in this last week. Um, I think I did uh, five interviews in the last week, and we've got another five planned for the next week, a combination of, uh, of interviews on, on talking about us and what it is that we're doing, as well as people that are interested in helping us out and want to participate in global transformation and creating global solutions with us. Uh, it is definitely a, a globally collaborative effort. We have people all around the world that are helping our project, and we're coordinating these folks and plugging them into what it is so that we can complete our open source and free shared blueprints even faster, and so and putting it all out as we complete it. So you'll see a lot of aspects of our website where it's not done. We're not a group where we wait until the very last minute until it's all fine and polished and we can say, hey, here it is. Our goal is to put everything out as quickly as we can as we're producing it so that people can take what we're doing and spin it off in another direction if they want to. As an open source and free sharing organization, um, our purpose is to get the information in the hands of the people that want it as quickly and as efficiently and as effectively as possible, as usable as possible. So if there's somebody that really wants to focus on food, but they're not looking at it the same way that we're looking at it, and they, but they want to create a solution as well, maybe just in their own life, or maybe they want to start up a community or a sustainable or self-sufficient village or city or something like that, they can take the information that we're providing and start using it right away and move in a different direction. In some case, thousands of hours, some cases, thousands of hours of work have been put in and if you look at like our food infrastructure is a great example, or our housing infrastructure is a great example, or the education plan, the education model is a phenomenal example of everything that's that's of just a huge, just hundreds, if not that well, thousands of hours of work that have been done to create a product that's usable right now. And so um, this is our way of creating global solutions to put this information out as quickly as possible and to also share the path of creation so that people can learn from that as well and that's what these video blogs are a lot about also so to recap everything that we accomplished um, I started off with the education program the education for life program is meant to be an all ages education program which can which applies to all aspects of life and it's meant to be implemented either in a community environment in the teacher hub uh, demonstration model that we're talking about in that environment we create a complete education program for all ages including adults that integrates in with social architecture and so we finished lesson plan one. And if you go to our website and take a look at everything we've accomplished on that, we've reviewed and studied all of the most amazing education programs out there. Waldorf, Montessori, Regio, ORF, Study Tech, um, Aid Intelligences, Bloom's Taxonomy. We looked at all of these different programs we, and to, to bring together to create these lesson plans. But not just to create the lesson plans, to also create the ultimate classroom to also create the ultimate list of teaching tools, resources, and other um, usable elements to add into an education program, to create teaching strategies for teaching multiple subjects simultaneously and making it interesting and fun. And so the teaching strategies are done. The strategies of being are done, which is strategies of great teachers, leaders, and communicators. That aspect is also done. The curriculum is also done. The outline of all the different curriculum to be taught which has been the source for these math molecules, which will be visual representations that will go along with that as well. But the curriculum goes so far beyond just the basics of what you see being taught in traditional education. You know, what about teaching about integrity? What about teaching about thinking and creating for the highest good of all? What about teaching about love? What about teaching about uh, honesty? What about teaching about valor? These kinds of things. And so these are all included in the curriculum. What about teaching mindfulness? What about teaching fun? So the lesson plan, which is now done, and you can see this up on the website, is a mind map of a central theme. And the first one that we've completed, the central theme is time. And so within the context of time, you teach all of the different subjects. You teach English, you teach math, you teach science, you teach social sciences, you teach values, all of these different things. And in values, for instance, we teach about time management. How do you manage your time? And we've created a lesson plan for every age group, for every subject, multiple 
lesson plans, actually multiple ideas to draw off of for every age group, every subject from preschool to, to post school to adult learning uh, that, that, that will be useful for everyone. And we've created it in such a way that you can click on the links there and you can send us your ideas. You can send us the things that you think should be included in there and we can evolve it and grow it through a global collaborative. And so this first template is the beginning of hundreds of lesson plans that will be put out so that people in a homeschooling environment could grab one of these lesson plans and immediately implement it in the lives of their children. So people in a traditional schooling environment could grab one of these lesson plans, immediately implement it in that, in that environment, applying it within 10 minutes of grabbing it. So people in a third world country could take this and immediately implement that in their, in their lives as well. So, or in a community environment, like what it is that we're creating, a complete teacher demonstration learning hub and environment where the whole environment is designed to enrich people and to create and to help build up people that have the tools, tutorials, resources, everything necessary from an educational perspective to enter directly into higher level education with, with scholarship money and those kinds of things or to enter directly into the work environment which we would love to see people going out and spreading all over the world, helping to teach other people how to build complete, sustainable, and self-sufficient teacher demonstration hubs too. In that environment, it's meant to work with a complete system. And so the whole system covers everything from the teaching strategies that I mentioned to the learning strategies to all the different teaching tools where you're applying a resource-based economy where everybody is working together to say, hey, how should we stock this educational environment? Instead of having 40 families that buy a bunch of toys for their kids, what if 40 people got together and collaborated and shared those resources so that kids have more access to the learning tools and the teaching tools and the things that they need to get an amazing education than they do right now? What if they had more access because we cooperated and collaborated instead of competing with each other and because we were working together to provide the best environment possible for our children and for each other? And so, Lesson plan one is done. Now that we've got this format done, it took, uh, man, collaborative effort from the team to get this lesson plan done. God, probably easily 50, 60 hours just to get this one lesson plan done. But now that the format is done, it's up on the website. It's really beautiful with all the colors and the mind map is done. It should take us a fraction of the time to be able to duplicate that and start creating all these additional unique lesson plans. We've already got 35 of them that are outlined and, uh, and so now it's just a process of starting to create those. But somebody can take the lesson plan we have right now. I applied it with my son last week, started using it. It was super fun, did some really cool stuff that he loved with shadows and art. Um, we also talked about time. We integrated in a little bit into math and English as well. Very, very cool stuff. So, yeah, moving along. Also, I said in the subject of math, we are 90% done with the math molecule. And what we call the math molecule is a circular representation of the complete subject of math from the basics of counting and, and uh, measuring and time, which would be preschool and uh, grade school type stuff, all the way up to, to post high school educational studies, college level stuff, things like that, and how it integrates in with, with, with other subjects. And that last part is the 10% that still remains. So we're finishing that last circle the math molecule but you can see the almost completed version of it right now up on our on our written blog we invite you to check that out it is absolutely beautiful and when you look at that and you go whoa this is amazing how do i use this that's the piece that's coming next so we're going to start working on the web infrastructure to explain that and all the details of how it works and how that integrates in with the lesson plan the lesson plans are really standalone elements and they reference this math molecule so you don't need the math molecule be able to do that but if you look at the math molecule and you're using that <clears throat> as an evaluation tool for somebody's math skills that's how it's meant to be applied and so we're 90 percent done with that and then along with creating this lesson plan number one and along with completing this math molecule we've also put together the web infrastructure for all the subjects uh, is now up on the website and so those details are also in place and so we're, we need to fill in a lot of the content because we haven't finished the social sciences molecule although we have finished all the research for that we haven't finished the values molecule and we haven't finished the the science molecule and things like that we're still working on all that stuff but we get them we're getting the infrastructure in place so that when people uh, click on say the lesson plan they can click on that link and it'll lead to 
the math molecule, for instance, so you can see exactly where we're going, get an idea of what it is. And then a lot of the other aspects are in place. So a lot of the other elements are completely done, like I said. So um, yeah, you can access all that stuff from the website. Check it out. It's very, very cool. Um, and I think that completes education. Uh, just in a general note, we've also, behind the scenes, we're reformatting, as I said, we're reformatting all of the open source pages. And so this last week, we finished that behind the scenes. And what does that mean, finishing reformatting those open source hubs behind the scenes? Uh, what that means is we've got the Earthbag Village, like the housing infrastructure hubs are, are almost completely done. I mean, they're done, but there's some other elements that we're going to add in there to make those also more user-friendly. But the formatting of the housing hubs, the formatting of the Sago Center Duplicable City Hub, uh, open source hub, is exactly what we want to use for the entire website. And so what we're doing behind the scenes so that we don't destroy our website in the process, and so multiple people can work on it at one time as we copy the content that we have over right now over to a new page and then we start reorganizing that. And in that process we need to go look at where all the links are going and make sure that we're, I mean it requires a massive, massive reorganization of how it is that we are, um, that the website is designed, including new menus and things like that are all coming also. And so um, behind the scenes, we've got all that work is done and we've started applying all of that work now uh, front and center. And so um, specifically on that, we have actually finished the highest good for all society page has been reformatted based on that format. We've got some other details that we're adding to that too, but the, the complete reformatting and the rewriting of that content and double checking all the links and kind of restructuring it so it's a lot easier to interact with, all that stuff is now done. And so we're excited to have that uh, complete. In food infrastructure, um, we have, uh, we've got 30 of the food forest of 300 food forest plants are now complete. Um, which is now a total now of over 380 plants that we have done the research on. We have over, um, wow, no, we've completed, not research, we've researched over 600 plants. We've completed the information for 380 plants are now up on the website. So, which includes complete descriptions, images, um, cultural considerations, planting guidelines, uh, as well as uh, how those plants will be received, where to purchase that plant material because it's rare and exotic plants from around the world, and then also um, planting plans for all six of our initial food infrastructure houses. So we have a large-scale aquapini, which will produce uh, large volumes of food, especially the basics, the foundations, leafy greens, and things like that, as well as growing indoor trees. And then we have Wallapini 3, which is a tree house specifically, but takes aquaponics out of it. Large-scale aquapini has aquaponics. Then we have the uh, small Wallapinis, which are more affordable versions of that for growing trees, things like that. And they, each one of these houses has a different internal environment. And the reason why we're doing this, we talk about creating global solutions. Well, our idea for a global solution is completely revolutionize the way that people are looking at food to provide a higher quality of food, to, to, apply, to, uh, to shift the world to eating a more biodiverse uh, diet, to provide more nutritional value in our food, and to provide fresher food. And we're not doing this because we want to put the current industry out of business. Instead, we're doing this because we want to see that industry evolve. If there were people growing really diverse and amazing foods all over your local cities, all over your urban areas, then, and there were people that wanted that, then grocery stores would start stocking it, and they would start putting money into the small farmers and the people that were providing that. How amazing would that be? You know, there's no shortage of need for food, so it's not like the large agricultural businesses are going to go out of business. But the reality of it is, is there's a lot of farmers right now that are getting paid pennies on the dollar for what it is that they provide. Government subsidies and things like that are helping a lot, but what if we could provide them a unique product that they could offer to grocery stores and high-end restaurants? And how great would that be for them? How great would that be for the consumer? How great would that be for the people that they might want to share and barter that with? Or for local farmers markets where people want to directly support people? You know, so our food infrastructure, and we talked about how we've got another 30 food forest plants are now up and complete, and we've got 380 plants that we've completed total. 
uh, draws on the most amazing plants and foods from around the world to provide a level of diversity and quality that people, have, most people have never even imagined. 50 different types of apples will be grown in Wallapini too. 50 different types of figs will be grown in Wallapini too. 50 different types. And so we want to expose people to this diversity because it exists. It's just not something that really works when you've got to transport your food hundreds if not thousands of miles and then have it sit on the shelf for long periods of time. But if you've got an environment where you can provide fresh food to people, locally grown food, where you can pick that apple and eat it immediately, or you want apples that are specific for frying, or you want apples that are specific for storing, or you want apples that are specific for baking, or you want apples that are specific for school lunches, there's different apples out there that are amazing for this. Some of them don't look that good. Some of them aren't that consistent in their size. And some of them, you know, only last so long, and others really are best if they last a long time. And so that's just one small example of how it is that we're creating global solutions for food. Now imagine taking that example to third world countries where a lot of these places are just struggling just to survive, you know, and food is, is a much greater necessity than it is in developed nations. This is what we want to do. And the way that we want to, the way that we're motivating the global solution is, as we said, making it affordable enough, making it easy enough, and making it attractive enough. And one of the things that we see in third world countries that's specifically more attractive than in developed nations is the ease of building things like this. There's not as many restrictions on building codes and things like that. And we're doing everything to code so that it'll be able to be built in areas that need that and so that it's safe and so that it'll last a long time. But more importantly, for people that really want to build out complete villages and really make a difference in the lives of people, Third world countries is where you can do it. And so imagine taking this kind of food infrastructure into those areas and not just to provide food, but to teach people how to produce and to, and to, and to uh, build structures like this for themselves that can produce enough greens, for instance, for hundreds of people, that can supplement the diet of thousands of people, you know, or that can completely feed uh, people on a vegetarian diet, not thousands, but a lot also on this with a diversity of food that you just can't get in a grocery store. And so to have another 30 food forest plants up and on the website now is very exciting. We'll continue moving forward on that in the background. And, um, and this has led to something that's super exciting because we've been talking about it now for whew, almost a year. And um, with Ziggy, the RBE 10K uh, founder of the RBE 10K project, as well as our botanist has been really, really interested in this as well, which is creating, beginning the work on a global plant information application and database that will include everything that we've got on our website and a whole lot more of things that we intend to add to that website, but an open source database where you can have a global collaborative of people inputting information and adding to that with recipes, with what plants are growing best, where does this grow well in aquaponics, does this grow well with hydroponics, does this grow best in, uh, does this grow best in cold clients, hot clients, all that kind of stuff. This information database, like the Wikipedia of plants, that we could then take that information, Wikipedia could draw off that and make Wikipedia even better. But more importantly, to create something that's a global collaborative of people that are interested in plants to work in conjunction with our open source botanical garden model, which you can see on onecommunityglobal.org forward slash botanical garden, um, and, and to work with um, the structures that we're building as well, and then to work with the teacher demonstration hubs that we're creating so that when people start inventing new ways to cook and prepare these foods because you've never brought them together before, you've never brought these vegetables together, we can share that. When people learn that, hey, this grows really well in Ecuador, uh, but it's not so well in Brazil because the soil is different. Or when we did this with this plant, it really produced a lot more. Or, man, these two companion plants, we never had any idea that they would work so well together. And uh, we want to share that. And so accessioning all of the information, which is having a number code for every single thing that you grow and keeping track of that. So as the evolution of these plants within, within these environments happens, you can log that, you can track that, you can keep all that information and provide that as a global solution, <coughs> excuse me, as a global solution to the food supply and to evolving, to true stewardship with plants and improving the way 
that we look at our food supply and we look at growing plants and evolving plants and providing uh, even higher quality and more sturdy and more durable and um, you know, just plants that do better in different environments and, and communicating and sharing their information. So we begin work on a global plant information application with uh, our newest partner. He's not even up on the website yet, Guy Fraser. We've been talking for weeks, though, and, um, and he's been working on this for a long time. And Michael Martin, our botanist, just has this ridiculous amount of information in his head. And, uh, and then we've got our horticulturist on our team, as well as a whole bunch of other folks that are plugged into what we're doing. We're going to start putting this information together in an application form. And so we've got some images of kind of what the structure of this is going to look like so you can see what this is. We're doing a shout out and we're going to start really reaching out to the world to find more coders, more programmers to create this free application that will draw on the USDA database. It will draw on several other databases that we're looking into getting access to um, to provide the most comprehensive, by far, the most comprehensive plant database in the world and usable globally accessible, globally usable, open source and free shared so that people that are interested in this stuff have a place that they can put their information that's protected forever, that's accessible forever, and so we can start working as a human species on these solutions. So that all of us that are interested in doing the right thing and doing something that really makes a difference can create this. Because we look forward 10, 20, 30 years, you know, and we see no reason why there can't be hundreds if not thousands of teacher demonstration communities, villages, and hubs around the world working on our food supply, growing foods successfully that have never been grown in places that have been barren, where people have been starving in the past, and not just providing food to the starving, but providing knowledge to those that want to apply it, and providing the necessary resources, the money and the funding, because private money, mainstream money, wants to get involved because of the individual and personal benefit that all of this creates, the lifestyle that goes along with the teacher demonstration community, village, and city, the self-sufficient aspect of it, the more time with your kids, the idea of almost kind of returning to a time where it's like whole families work together, but in a way where you have access to infinite information, an amazing education program through the Education for Life program and others like the Khan Academy, great organizations that are doing wonderful things and creating information that's free and available to people anywhere in the world and bringing internet to places where it's never been before. Bringing food, like what we're talking about, places where it's never been before. Bringing housing to places where it's needed most. So devastated places like the Philippines where you can go in there and rebuild it as complete, sustainable, and self-sufficient infrastructure housing that will last for hundreds of years. It's more tornado resistant, more uh, typhoon resistant, this kind of stuff, tsunami. So yeah, we've got some pretty amazing stuff that's happening. Uh, and we're working on aquaculture. We're pricing out the hardware that's needed for the aquaculture within those, those housing structures. So Michael's doing the work on that along with everything else that he's done. We're looking at, okay, what pumps do we need? And then, you know, what's the best way to seal these things? Because traditionally it's been done with a pond liner, you know, and we've got trees and stuff that are growing in there. And so how do you, you know, there's things that you can buy that will guide those tree roots to go deeper before they spread out so that those roots aren't going to come up underneath the, um, <clears throat> so those roots aren't going to come up underneath the aquaculture and crack those structures if we go with something that's not a pond liner, which it looks like we're going to, you know, and then what's the best way to seal that? And we continue to look at aquaculture. We're contacting uh, a lot of the different um, organizations here in the United States to see what kind of fish we can get. Because we really want to see if we can raise, since we're not really, our aquaculture, not raising it as a large scale food production um, operation, we could, but we don't see that as providing the healthiest, happiest critters. And we really want to create an ecosystem where everything within that ecosystem is truly thriving. And so with that in mind, um, you know, we're contacting a lot of organizations to see what's endangered out there. And if we can create environments that really help to support some of these species that are being wiped out and, um, and building a structure for teaching others to support local species and for contacting their, their local uh, government organizations and saying, hey, you know, what are you guys struggling the most to keep alive and could we start that? And so specifically, we're looking at freshwater mussels is one of the things that we're looking at uh, local to the state that we'll be building in as well as um, crawfish 
that are endangered to try and start boosting up some of those populations and to um, create something where you could possibly uh, get government funding and grants for that and then start repopulating areas that have been devastated and have lost a lot of these populations of amazing, amazing aquaculture. And so, um, yeah, that's what we're doing in aquaculture. Uh, we talked about also um, that we uh, completely uh, rewrote well, first of all, I said that we finished reformatting the Highest Good Society page, and so I think I already talked about that. Um, I, and then I mentioned that we uh, completely updated and rewrote the Time Allotment Projections page. And what that is, is is the specifics of exactly how time will be allotted within the one community environment once we land on the property to be able to continue to create all of our open source tools, tutorials, blueprints, resources, all this stuff once we're on the property so that we could put out 300 YouTube videos in the first six months. You know, we're doing one a week right now because I'm doing these video blogs, but once we land on the property, you know, we want do-it-yourself tutorials, video tutorials for everything that we're creating, which is a ridiculous amount of content when you consider you're building housing, you're building food infrastructure, you are building energy infrastructure. We are also going to be operating the Complete Education for Life program, which is why we're developing this, so that we have the first six months completely done and we can operate that and evolve it in real time with the kids and show how the whole thing works and all of this, as well as the social architecture aspect, the for-profit and non-profit business models, how to run a complete um, teacher demonstration, tourist destination, so that people can come and visit and for less than the price of what they would pay at a nice hotel, stay in an environment which is a teacher demonstration hub where they can experience the social architecture, the recreational model, the education model. They can get hands-on experience with building and food production, all these different things, and see that the people living there are producing and getting an immense amount done. And in our 40-hour community contribution week, we have more free time than anybody working a 40-hour job. Anybody working a traditional 40-hour job. And the reason why is because that 40 hours also includes domestic duties and includes child care, and it's all centrally located in these teacher demonstration communities, villages, and hubs. So people don't have to commute to work. So people don't have to commute for their food. So people don't have to commute to take their kids to school. So people don't have to commute, like eliminate all of that stuff. And then combine these foundational aspects of everybody's life, like food preparation, so you have a team that puts together food to feed 40, 50, 100, and ultimately we'll get to the point, and this is what the Sego Center Duplicable City Hub is all about, get to the point where we're feeding 150, 200 people at a time as a full-time nonprofit venture of creating global solutions. Hundreds of nonprofit volunteers where a percentage of their time every single week is dedicated to open source and free sharing tools, tutorials, resources, and plans, and then a a huge percentage of their week is in this constant expansion and growth of the model itself and then sharing how that's being done. And so um, this is this is what it is. And so in the last week, we finished reformatting the, or sorry, we completely rewrote the time allotment projections page, which talks, which talks about exactly what it is that we would have. You know, you start out with this huge pool of time. If you have everybody contributing 40 hours, 35 hours of their time to creating everything that we're talking about as a nonprofit volunteer and then an additional five hours towards social architecture, and nobody's working a traditional job, and our organization is set up so that we're bringing together people who don't have debt, who are capable of doing this, so we can set it up so that people that do have debt will have a way to get out of debt in the future. And so we can provide these open source and free shared blueprints so that people can uh, take what we're doing and they could liquidate their assets and, and build something like this as either an investment or as a long-term lifestyle plan. And it will really work, you know, as an alternative to what people are doing right now. as one way that people could create a completely new life for themselves that they could then either sell to somebody else if they decide it's not for them or that they could maintain and live this lifestyle forever never having to work a traditional job again. So that they're commodity, they're valuable, uh, and um, profitable. Commodity is the way of life. And in sharing that way of life, people coming and paying to stay with them, where they get to experience these live classes, where they get to experience the education program, where they get to experience living in these, these uh, sustainable housing infrastructure examples where they get to experience the homemade meals and the homegrown food, all those people that come to that environment can then take everything that they experience 
and go duplicate it for themselves, becoming self-replicating across the world, saying, wow, this is really amazing. Imagine if the next vacation that you took, somebody said, you know, this is a vacation for you, but you realize you could live like this for the rest of your life, and you'd have more time with your friends and family, you'd have more time with your kids, you'd have more availability, the things that you want most because you're sharing, instead of every single person having one crummy blender, uh, you've got one really great blender that lasts a lifetime. And if it breaks, you guys pull your resources and buy a new one as one example. You know, resource-based economy application. Or not. There's lots of ways to do it without that as well. And so that's exactly what we're working on is giving people options for doing it either the way that we're doing it or doing it completely different. And so we re <laughs> we finished the time allotment projections page which talks about exactly where all the hours go and what that structure looks like. And you can go and you can then go and look at you know, some things like the time allotment projection specifically for the different components which the Earthbag Village has done that talks about the rollout of exactly how many hours will be put into building the complete Earthbag Village so that we can show that a complete village can be built in under two years that will house over a hundred people and it can be done for less than half a million dollars or significantly less than that if you were going to build it in a third world country significantly less because you don't need the permitting there's a lot of other details that you don't need and um, and uh, and it could be built even even more affordably than that with the resources that they have there because their furniture and things like that are very different so just one example so we've, we've uh, finished the rewriting of that page and you can take a look at all those details as well we'll include a link there's a link of uh, to it to this uh, in the written blog um, we also said that we are 90% done with the Earthbag Village landscaping in 3D. Uh, just pictures are really the thing to see there. So the landscaping that's happening in 3D is all the necessary landscaping in the 3D model so that we can start putting in the plants where they're going to be. And we're looking at that landscaping because it's important for us to see how the water is going to flow within that Earthbag Village because we're going to collect all the water that we can from those environments. We want to teach people how to do this in areas that don't have a lot of water, along with swaling and things like that, that can completely rejuvenate an area. And that's what the food forest is all about, is teaching people how to design food forests that is hundreds of acres or hundreds of, excuse me, hundreds of acres or hectares of uh, space that, that it can be converted into a self-sustaining um, environment, really an environment that produce, just produces food and that would have to be literally bulldozed to stop it from producing food. And so um, that's what the Earthbag Village now, we've got all the plants and stuff that are going to be outdoor plantings, all that stuff is done as part of the food forest and so we're doing the landscaping, we're finishing that landscaping up and then working on the inside of the tropical atrium that's the central piece to that, that food forest that continues to work. So we'll include some pictures of that, uh, of the village for you so that you can take a look at that and see exactly what's been done there. And then, um, oh, and then the Seiko Center. Oh, and then a 5D version. So we've got a new partner that we just partnered with, and we're going to get them up on the website in this next week, and then we'll share this, where you'll actually be able to walk around in that village. You'll actually be able to walk around in the village and check it out. And so this new partner of ours, and we'll talk more about it next week, has the ability to turn uh, developing plans into virtual reality environments. It's amazing. And so they've done this for us, and their application is something that anybody could do this for themselves. You can take any SketchUp model and import it. You can take a CAD model and import it into their software, and then you can actually walk around it and meet other people walking around this virtual environment from anywhere in the world. And so we're excited that we're going to be able to share a walk-around version of first the, the where it is right now, version of the village, and then uh, that'll evolve so that, so that you'll be able to walk around it even more. Now that we know that we have this ability, we want to you know, open up some doors. We want people to be able to walk into different units and look around and see exactly what the furniture is going to look like in there and all of these amazing details also. So, um, and then I said that the Sego Center final dining dome windows and doors are also done in 3D. And so we'll include some pictures of that in the written blog as well. And uh, you can see exactly what that looks like. So the last, the last windows that are necessary for proper venting, because we want to do as much passive heating and cooling as possible. Adds a whole bunch of details there. And so we're just continuing to plug forward and move forward on that 3D. And we're just a few weeks away now from then taking all the 3D work that we've done, 
updating our CAD with everything that we learned and putting it in 3D and then working with our partners at P2S Engineering to finish the mechanical electrical engineering and um, really get the details necessary for that building to become LEED Platinum certified. And we've gotten, I said also that we have a huge outpour of support that's happened this last week. We have really been aggressively looking for engineers specifically, um, but also additional 3D SketchUp people to join our team. And so um, with that, we've had, we've had a huge outpour of support in this last few weeks of people that have said that they would want to work with us and, uh, and, and talk about how we can work together and, and help creating these global solutions. And so um, we had, as I, we've had in the last week, I had five interviews just in this last week, and I've got another five planned for this next week talking to people, seeing where their skill sets are, how they can plug into what it is that we're doing, and um, you know how we can produce more open source and free shared content, tools, tutorials, and resources even faster for even more people and make them even more comprehensive and uh, get everything to the point where it's shovel ready. And so um, we're super excited for all that support. We love the fact that people are sharing our project and the emails and stuff that we're getting. And so as always, I'd like to wrap up by saying um, you know, how people can help us the most right now. If you would like to help us right now, the number one thing that people can do to help us right now, if you'd like to assist us, is uh, share what it is that we're doing. And more specifically, if you know somebody that can help us with funding, we're really, we take nonprofit donations, but what we're really looking for is one really serious funder you know, somebody that can donate to our project like I donate to the Organic Consumers Fund, uh, only we're looking for a multi-million dollar funder to help us get the property off the market. That's really what we want to do. We've had a property that we have been designing everything that we're doing around for the last three years. Fortunately, it's still on the market. We can't share the location because if it were to be purchased out from under us, it would be very, very sad. And um, we don't want to see that happen. And so we're looking for that funder, maybe somebody that here as we go into the tail end of uh, 2013 wants a huge tax deduction and would like to make a huge donation, or maybe somebody that's just looking to really invest in creating global solutions that wants to truly, truly make a difference and sees what it is that we're doing, sees our 100% volunteer nonprofit staff uh, working hard and would like to see us multiply everything that we're creating a hundredfold, a thousandfold. And the number one way that someone could do that right now would be to help us get that property off the market so that we can share that location so that people that we get people that say, man, I've been following your project for years now and we just love what you're doing. Um, we got lots of people that are following our project and are just waiting for us to announce that we have the property before they would apply to become a pioneer and join the team full time because that, that piece of legitimacy to everything that we're doing, knowing where that location is because a lot of people don't want to live in this place or that place or they're really interested in what the climate's going to be or they really you know they have their own reasons whatever their reasons are for what they're looking for well you know we'd like to be able to share complete weather pattern details and you know pictures of the property and videos of the property and ideas of where the different things are going to be placed and start taking it to that level but to do that we need somebody to help us get the property off the market so if you know somebody uh or you think you know somebody who knows somebody that could possibly help us get the property off the market then the way to do that would be please share what it is that we're doing. Contact us and let us know. We follow up on every single lead, every single uh, direction that somebody says, hey, you should contact these folks. We contact everybody because we're you know doing everything that we can to find the funding that we need so we can take this whole project to the next level. And so that's the way that people can help us the most. Or, as I said, you can join us, you know, get involved with our project. Um, We've got, we've got lots of room for consultants and partners on this team. You know, we've got, we're also seeking the pioneer team. We're always building our pioneer team, and we do tons of interviews looking for those special people that really have the consciousness and the, and the drive for the highest good of humanity and the skill set to join our team, our elite team, and the financial stability for themselves so they're not in debt so that they can create like our whole team is and give everything that we're doing away. It's a really, really big aspect of what it is that we're doing because we want to give it away so that people that, that so that it doesn't become monetized. And so our team is, is um, financially all stable enough so that we can do that. We've, we've, um, we've been wise 
in our finances to be able to be to the point where we are now so that we can volunteer our time for this project. And I'll tell you right now, if any one of us on this team had the money that we need to buy this property, I, we would donate it instantly to do that. I would give everything that I have, but everything that I have is not sufficient to buy the property that we need, but it is sufficient to keep doing what I do every single day, every single week, every single month, and every single year now full-time for the last three years, um, organizing this project and creating global change and moving towards this vision, this, this version of our planet that meets the needs of everybody. An improved way of living for every single person and every single thing alive on this planet. A way of living that supports the environment, that operates with a true stewardship mentality of building, of giving more than you take, of giving to your surrounding communities, of giving to your surrounding cities, countries, giving to the world and making a difference and, and um, truly building this planet up in a way that is not just not only good for the planet, but is truly sustainable. Sustainable growth, sustainable improvement self-replicating teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities that work as a global cooperative, that work as a global co collaborative, working together to create a world that works for everybody and teaching more and more people how to do this so that we can really address what's going on right now with for the people that need it the most and, and um, you know, for all aspects, for everywhere around this planet. And so this is what we're doing. And so uh, if you're somebody that might want to join us in this endeavor, that somebody would like to participate and what is it we're creating, we definitely invite you to do that. And uh, if you just want to help us out in something that would take just a couple minutes, just share our information. Share our funding page, onecommunityglobal.org forward slash funding is the funding that we're looking for. Or share any page of our website that you think would really inspire people and get people interested. Put it out there. You know, we could definitely see sometimes somebody will share something that we've created in a new circle and all of a sudden there's this huge burst of support and it's just so cool to see that, you know, people that are interested in what it is that we're doing or people joining our discussion group that we have uh, on Facebook as well. And you can just see folks that are, that are getting involved that, that weren't before. And so thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, with that, I will say thank you one last time. And uh, until next week, until we, weekly update number 41, we will keep on keeping on. And uh, thanks for following our project.